executive director for MBRU, that's Memphis Bus Riders Union, and we are taking a trip along some of the most uh, dilapidated communities, communities that's been left out of that 3.0 plan, which when we become uh, mayor, we're going to shut that down and we're going to revise that. Also, we're going to take this bus ride to show how uh, horrible it is to get from one community to the job. The last time they timed it, it took about an hour and 40 minutes for a 20 minute, for an hour and 40 minutes for a bus ride, which will take 20 minutes. So we need to redirect all of that, re restructure the whole setup, but more specifically, make sure we in involve the community, involve the corporations that we are uh, bringing here and the ones that's already here. So come along with us. This is Justin right here. Great guy, great millennial. He is moving this city forward. Go on uh, Facebook and look up MBRU, Mrs. Bus Rider Union. Like and follow the page. Thumbs up. Get involved in the community. Get involved in what's happening here in Memphis. Man. Be a home right here. I don't use low-income low homes because that's open for interpretation. That says to me, low-income means that I got low-income material that's inside of my home, not energy efficient. Low-income doesn't mean affordability to me. So I said, let's do affordable homes that's energy efficient. And so we, we can tear down one section then we could build three, four nice affordable homes that's livable, that they can, people can be able to build dreams and build memories in them. And then we could do the same thing at the next one. Slow process. Everything we're trying to push it too fast, that's why we're in the position we are now. Communities out here that really needs the most. Gentrification, I know people go to holler that. It's inevitable. But you have to have a plan for gentrification. Everybody wants better at the end of the day. I want better for my family, you want better for yourself, your friends, and your family. So in the midst of rebuilding and building better, we just gonna shut down whole communities and have a diaspora of people all over the place with nowhere to go. No, we gotta involve the community in this. To say, yes, we wanna tear down some of these old dilapidated homes and apartments, but what's the plan for them? Where are we going to put you right now? And where you really want to be at? You love your neighborhood. You can share that on our page too. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I got I got this app. It's supposed to show, like, in real time where the buses are. Right. Uh, it's called Translope. It's interesting because it seems like a lot of people don't really know about it. You know, like we've asked people before, like, you know, did you know Matta has this app about the books? Right. And a lot of the time people would be like, what are you talking about? So well, that's bad communication on the part of the city. Because that'll be very helpful for like we're walking, right? So we're knowing that we're trying to rush to get to the 341. And now we get there, we still wait 10 minutes. Right. So, but but that's another problem to say, why can't they be on time? Right? Well, oh, we, yeah. Or, oh, yeah. or more specifically, what we're saying is we need more buses on this route. At the end of the day. Yeah, I mean that kind of that liability, that's yeah. a really big deal for us. Because, you know, a lot of the time, like when we, you know, when we do a stuff with bus riders, I've noticed that a lot of the time bus riders just there's kind of just like this internal clock. Yeah. Where you kinda of like you you give Matt a ten minute window. Oh yeah, right. Like right. before and after, like just in case it shows up early and passes you by, <laughs> and just in case it shows up late. Wow. Like but that reliability is saying another thing to people saying that I'm utilizing this as for my means of transportation to get to work or to get to exactly. a school or get to the doctor's appointment, right? So if I got a doctor's appointment at 1 and the bus said it'll be there at 12, 15, I know I'll be on time and it'll come to 12, 30. Exactly. And now what happens at doctors? Oh, we missed the spot. Or that $25 we got to And I don't have the $25. Yeah. So we got more... Uh, Concerned about the citizens that's out here and that need the transportation. For sure. I mean, it's like, you know, for, for a lot of people, that, that timing thing, you yeah. know, for a lot of people, it's like, you know, like if you work nine to five, your bus in the morning, if it's hot, your bus in the morning, that might be the difference between you getting to your job on time and you getting there late. Right, and, and also keeping your job. And keeping your job. Right. Because most, most companies don't understand the plight of our people at all. 
that we're forty percent poverty rate, so that means right. we can't like afford you. vehicles. Yeah, we like, can't you know, afford. Folks, and what do folks want when they, you know, they want you to have reliable transportation? That's the first. They, that's a question on there, right? Yeah. Like they want, they want to know that you're gonna be able to get there on time every day. Right. So I mean, you know, we, I mean, we know like folks in our group who like lost jobs because of the bus. Oh wow. We know people who have dropped out of classes because the bus system was so bad they oh, couldn't get God. there on time. They trying to make a better life for themselves, but the city is saying that, oh well, at the end of the day, because yeah. why? They lost, they losing their job because of poor public transportation. And they gotta be something. We have to address that. Yeah. We gotta have equity in our in our citizens here. And really, for you know, the bus drivers in this like the problem is we've been building up over time. Like one of the, you know one of the big things we talk about is that over time you know the city of Memphis has been spreading out, right? All this urban uh -huh. sprawl. That's right. Jobs have been moving further and further out yeah, east, absolutely, and into the suburbs. Yep. So then, so then we say like, well, then why haven't Madison's resources adapted been, to that? Right. Like why haven't we been increasing their funding, and why haven't we been increasing the amount of buses on the street? things like that I would to say, match the fact that it's spreading out I would say this is the reason why because of classism classism say I'm going to Germantown because they have 80% of wealth out there they don't they don't need public transportation and yes we want to put those jobs out there we want the people who live out there to have those jobs we didn't miss our bus mm. okay <laughs> we're not, so we're, we're looking for the 32 oh we're going to 32 okay Airways, up and down, up and down. So they're saying, hey, we don't want you to come out here and get the good job. So they're not looking to lower the poverty level. They're not looking to increase uh, the job market by not increasing the amount of buses and services out there. Just like you mentioned earlier, saying that we build Amazon way out there, but poor bus service to get the people to the job. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, yeah, we just, you know, we just keep seeing these, you know, these gaps. We're just like, you know, you got all these, you know, folks who live in the residential areas over here, but all the jobs are over here. Right. And if you don't actually have a way to get out of your neighborhood to get to those places, then you end up just kind of stuck where you stuck are. Stuck where you are, that's absolutely. But then also, through negotiation of uh, economic development, we you got to have somebody at the table and say, look, I'm not going to put you way out there and we got people here how can we say let's build closer to the residents that's well more specifically have in mind that bus route to get them there yeah while we're at the table negotiating pilot programs and whatever else we have tip programs blight programs to say hey let's make sure that we can get to they can get to the job and that question that's on the application what do you have reliable transportation? Hopefully, the bus shows up on time. <laughs> but I would like to speak more about that uh, industry diversification a little bit later on to say that we, we, we have to begin to look at more industry jobs instead of just uh, distribution. Because yeah, the millennials and plus our youth and young people they're not big on that. They big on technology. And what are we are we really preparing them for those types of jobs? Are we preparing them, preparing them for robotics? Are we preparing them for coding? Are we preparing them for self-driving cars? Are we preparing them for uh, green emissions, right? I think would they be ready when everything turned over? But right now it doesn't look like that. Right? So we, we really gotta uh, change the dynamics of that and stop focusing on one thing. We we got that distribution hub down pat. So we need to look at Silicon Valley right here in Memphis, Tennessee. That's what we need to be looking at. And I know that we have uh, the intelligence, the expertise. We have the, some of the best colleges and universities right here in Memphis. And some of the smartest young adults that I have ran into in 20 different states that I have been. And I know that we can do it here. We just got to give them the opportunity. Yes. They changed the whole, what you call the rat. Yeah, 
yeah. all the rap, but we changed it up. That's how it We crossed it? Like yeah, it looks now. From Memphis, yes. Ended up going here, you know. Sometimes I see a lot of, you know, we got a lot of people who end up going out of town for various things just because they feel like there's more opportunity, yes, outside of the city. Um, and so, like, you know, this is like part of. I think part of what drew me personally to this issue is just like we're talking about transportation. We're really talking about access. Absolutely. Like, you know, we're talking about access to opportunity, to education. Yes. To basic necessities. Come on. Yes. You know, it's all about. Access. Yeah. And, and what you just said, man. When we have students that's coming from all over the country to go to road, out of the country to go to road, right? And then they realize that the degree I just obtained, I can't even use it. And if I can use it, how would I get back into it? There's no real like you said, access or reliability in that. So we really need to speak to that to say, well, we got we got you here because of we have great education, right? So how can we keep you here? Memphis is a great city. Memphis is a beautiful city. We just need to grow in the industry to say, yes, we need to couple and partner with colleges like Rhodes, University of Memphis, trade schools, Southwest, and look at the curriculum and look at the degrees being passed out and obtained and say, now, Let's talk to other corporations that want to come to Memphis. And let's make sure that everybody here have an opportunity and a great life with beyond, I don't like using livable wage because that's open for interpretation. Especially to do with corporations, right? So I would say we're looking at a medium income throughout the United States. $75,000 is a medium income if we look at the United States trailer park. So we're here in Mississippi said we can beat that because we got the some most powerful most intelligent students right here because I look at Berkeley look at UCLA look at Stanford people pass their people up to come to road because of University of Memphis that is saying something we got to capture those children we have to capture those students by offering those jobs and we have to offer better transportation and we got to be able to have it in our most walkable communities Right? We just walked a half a mile. There was nothing walkable about that. <laughs> right? Yeah. What would it look like to be able to say, yes, we have, what, we, we walked past one bus stop. Right? Yeah. The sign wasn't visible. There was no covering for the people out of the elements. Yeah. The sidewalks were tore up. It wasn't a pleasing sight. And a lot of the property that we saw was city owned. And they're not even taking care of it. So we got to send better signals to our uh, citizens out here by fixing this place up. We have the funds, we have the resources. We just need to convert them back to the right communities out here that really need the most. Gentrification, I know people go to holler that. It's inevitable. But you have to have a plan for gentrification. Everybody wants better at the end of the day. I want better for my family, you want better for yourself, your friends, your family. So in the midst of rebuilding and building better, we just don't shut down whole communities and have a diaspora of people all over the place with nowhere to go. No, we gotta involve the community in this. To say, yes, we wanna tear down some of these old dilapidated homes and apartments, but what's the plan for them? Where are we gonna put you right now? And where you really wanna be at? You love your neighborhood. So how can we just say, let's tear down oh. one section of oh, this you gonna put it up there? Be a home right here. Now don't use low, low income homes because that's open for interpretation. That says to me, low income means that I got low income material that's inside of my home, not energy efficient. Low income doesn't mean affordability to me. So I said, let's do affordable homes that's energy efficient. And so we, we could tear down one section. Then we could build three, four nice affordable homes that's livable, that they can, people can be able to build dreams 
and build memories in them. And then we can do the same thing at the next one. Slow process. Everything we're trying to push it too fast, that's why we're in the position we are now. By leaving our most vulnerable citizen out of here. And we gotta stop it. And our administration is gonna cease all of that. That, you know, especially that kind of like getting, you know, actually kind of redirecting food resources back into these communities that are not really getting hurt. That's definitely something that we want to talk to you about. Okay. Uh, so, I'm thinking right now is so it's... Where I bust that. Hey, right. hey guys, I'm here with Justin. He is the executive director for MBRU, that's Memphis Bus Riders Union. And we are taking a trip along some of the most uh, dilapidated communities, communities that's been left out of that 3.0 plan, which when we become uh, mayor, we're going to shut that down and we're going to revise that. Also, we're going to take this bus ride to show how uh, horrible it is to get from one community to the job. The last time they timed it, it took about an hour and 40 minutes for a 20 minute, for an oh, hour and 40 minutes for a bus ride, which will take 20 minutes. So we need to redirect all of that, re restructure the whole setup, but more specifically, make sure we in involve the community, involve the corporations that we're uh, bringing here and the ones that's already here. So come along with us. This is Justin right here. Great guy, great millennial. He is moving this city forward. Go on uh, Facebook and look up MBRU, Memphis Bus Rider Union. Like and follow the page. Thumbs up. Get involved in the community. Get involved in what's happening here in Memphis, Tennessee.